Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Escape Pod. Thank you so much for escaping with us. That's Andrew. I'm Alex. And as always, with great power comes great. What the heck was that script ability? Bang. What are we talking about, Alex? They should be able to guess. Yeah, um, we we are talking about Madam Web. Obviously, we are very late. I didn't think that y'all would care for our thoughts on Madam Web, but we have gotten a lot of people being like, "Where's your full Madam Web review on the pod?" Yeah. So here we are. Like you don't know what we're gonna say. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I thought all we needed to do was the quick yeah. walking out of the theater thoughts on that we TikTok. posted on TikTok. But no stress. Out of ten. Out of ten. Three. All right, Madam Web out of 10, three, two, one, one two. out of 10. Yeah. It's one of the worst comic book movies ever made, but yeah, yeah. I had a hell of a good time with it's it. It's so fun. If we're ranking it on how fun it is, it's like an eight or a nine. You could make the argument to me that Madam Web is a worse made movie than Fant Four Stick. I would watch Madam Web a hundred times before I saw Fant Four Stick again. I do want to watch Fant Four Stick and be able to compare them. It's like, it's tech, like they don't have ADR problems. The way that they do in Madam Web. But, like, Fan Force Stick is just, like, bo- so boring. Yeah. It's, like, so painful to get through. Are there any pros? Of Madam Web? Yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah, but not, it didn't mean to be. Isabella Merced is stunning. So is Sydney Sweeney. Yes, but less so in that movie, in my opinion. Dakota Johnson is stunning. Celeste O'Connor is stunning. I'm going to stand here. Emma Roberts is I'm actually, stunning. I'm actually going to sit here with my eyeballs and my butt mm-hmm. and say Dakota Johnson did a good job with what she was given. That's crazy. I thought her acting was actually really good. That's crazy. I don't think it was bad. I've seen her be given a good script and done bad jobs. Well, she did a good job. Well. But the cons were all fun. Yeah. So let's go, let's let top three each of cons, perhaps. Sure. What's number one? I mean, like con, it was bad, but it was fun, or con, just Just con. E- either one. Just something bad about it. You can say it was fun, either way. All the suit moments are in the trailer. Yeah, like, there's, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that not That was unfortunate, because the suits, they look pretty good. They look pretty good, They dude. look pretty good, and the women look pretty good in them. I kind of wish that we got that movie. That would be nice. Because... Maybe the sequel. (laughs) Which might happen because it's making way more money than... It's making so much money. A lot of people would expect. Uh, Me, the uh, super forced CPR. I knew you were going to say that. like... You've been talking about that for a week. I've never seen a scene that was more just like, why is this in here? (laughs) Only so they can use it at the end and try to have an emotional moment. Like, it was like, they're on the run, they're in a hotel room, and Brandon is just like... I'm going to teach you this one specific thing (laughs) about medical practice and I'm not going to teach you anything else and we're all going to have fun with it and then it's going to be weird and awkward. Um, So yeah, that was weird. You know, that that was such like, that was the most blatant use of Chekhov's gun I've ever seen in my life because sometimes movies do it really creatively. In recent memory, we had Indiana Jones 5. Not the best movie in the world. I really didn't like the middle part of that movie. But uh, at the start, when there's a there's a guy that brings room service to Mads Mikkelsen's character, um, the guy from Logan with the robot hand, who's one of Mads Mikkelsen's henchmen, is there reading and learning German, and he's practicing German, and that's Chekhov's gun for later in the movie. They they want to go back in time to Nazi Germany, so that's why he would need to learn German. Like this CPR was like, there's no other reason for it. You d- yeah, it was just, just so that it's, it's like, later wow, in the she movie. happened to teach them one, the one exact thing that she would need to have her <laughs> life saved at the end. <laughs> it's, it's just so bad. Uh, the villain is bad. Yep. Like, but hilarious. The villain was my favorite part. We need to find these spider girls. Need to my. My appointment with death draws nearer. And it's like not even close to what he's saying. Yeah. It's just hilarious. He's always barefoot. Always barefoot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a good time. It was a fun time. I like actively had a good Dude, time. Dude, and when he, when he like, <laughs> he jumped into the car that was coming at him. She drives the, the ambulance like up and then oh. off of a, out of a building. Yeah. And then like. It wasn't even close to hitting him. He sees it and then jumps like into the pathway of the car. Yeah. It was really stupid, but it was really funny. 
Yeah, it was a bad movie. But, oh, but it was so fun. fun. It was really fun. I'm so glad we went like, to I see it. Like, I actively would recommend for people to see it. Yeah, of course. Movies are to entertain you, and that movie especially will a, entertain you. Especially with a group. Yes, absolutely. Probably don't see Madame Webb. What, what else? What other movie you need to go see? Uh, I don't see, you need to see anything. I don't know what you're talking about. You need to see Dune Part 2, brother. Apparently the best movie of all time. Uh, one of them, maybe. I don't feel FOMO at all. Um, the only, you know, it might be a little sl- slow for some people. It's a little long, but like, it's really good. You did a full review of it with Connor on the Patreon, yes. right? Yeah so, yeah. so your full thoughts and your scores and everything like that. Obviously, if you're a longtime watcher of the pod, you know that I'm not going to be reviewing it. Yeah. Uh, eventually, they'll cast Timothy in Spider-Man 4 or some MCU movie or they'll make him Robin inexplicably in Batman 2 or... You know, he'll be in the DCU and I'll have to see him in something. And then I'll go back and see everything else. And then I'll let you know my thoughts on Dune and Dune Part 2. But not anytime soon. Yeah, Connor and I did like a whole like half of a Patreon episode. Yeah. And we talked about Avatar and Dune. Yeah. So that's already out and uploaded on the Patreon. Yeah, so if you want to see his full thoughts on Dune Part 2, Patreon. Thank you guys so, so much for that and uh, for all your love and support. Speaking of thanking them, let's answer their questions. Oh, you recently went to work out. You actually uh, just got back from the gym. Are you on. feeling a little sore right now? Yeah, that's crazy. Oh my gosh, he oh. got up on the chair so he oh wouldn't gosh. have to raise his oh arm. Gosh. Yeah, did you sleep well last night? Why? There was something in the air last night. It was my worst sleep since living in Los Angeles. I slept like a baby. Good, good for you. Slept slept well the night before too. Wow. Oh, jeez, your mother. Okay, um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's answer some questions. Yeah, let's, ah, yeah. I'm excited. let's get a let's get a clink to start off the fan segment. It's been a while since we've done one of these. We have. I shall missed I, you guys. Shall I start? Yes, please. Not a nerdy question, but why do you release pod episodes on a Monday? I assume that they might get more views if you release it on like a Friday or the weekend, and you guys pre-record them, right? Um, I have always done this. Um, I don't know if I explained it to you, but we early on decided that like we want the pot is an escape we want people to escape with us we want it to be a good thing so we want people to be able to like a lot of people don't like mondays a lot of people are going to work on mondays so we post it really early we post it like 3 a.m our time on monday so people can start their week with us and have a good time going to work and hopefully we're, we're able to we're able to help them on a, on, the, on the bad mondays yeah well a lot of people have said hey like you have made me love mondays yeah which always means means so much to us so yeah, yeah. uh Mwah! Golden Shinobi, the patron. Uh, just make Alex compare his neck to a uh, One Piece long neck tribe. That's really funny. We'll just put the image right here. That's <laughs> brutal. Is it- the long neck joke. Do you have a favorite long neck joke? There have been some really good ones. There have been some good ones. ones. I can't remember any right now, but. The Rick and Morty one is oh really funny. Oh my fun. gosh, because it like. it The phlegm too fl- yeah. is really funny. And it was so specific. Like, yeah. That's not like a super popular episode of Rick and Morty or yeah. anything. And, I, and I've and i watched all of it. I did not remember that character. And he had the exact time code of the episode. And yeah. we went and watched it and lost it. Yeah. That was a really good that one. That was a good one. A Loman Executor, I, I always welcome. I think that one's really funny. I've been getting those since that came out. It's not really a neck joke, but when Michaela asked if you had ever cosplayed as... Ratatouille. Yeah. Uh, Linguini. Yeah. Um, Alejandro1106 as the patron. Thoughts and opinions on the recent Drake leak. Impressive. I thought we talked about this already, but oh, e- did we? enormous. Yeah, massive schlong, dude. Yeah, dude. You watched the video? Of course. Of course. He was flopping that thing around. I do think it's real. You know the theories that it's like not no, real? No, it's definitely real. It's definitely real because it was wiped from the internet so quickly. Yeah, exactly. It went from everywhere on Twitter, like you couldn't go on Twitter without seeing it, to like gone, we were searching for it to send our roommate. And we couldn't, it took us 30 minutes and we couldn't find it. Like, I'm sure you could still find it, but like, nobody has the power to do that. Do you think as, as a celebrity, like if you got famous enough, you would be like, I'm never taking a naked picture ever again. No. I mean, I'm not like a naked picture guy. Like, I don't. Yeah, but like, like, you, I, you wouldn't be like, I, I'm, I, I can't, oh, I can't, I can't even. I can't, it would damage my brand. I don't think I'm ever going to think that if my penis leaks. I think it would help my brand. In a way that I think it's helped Drake. It has helped Drake. What will you guys do if Deadpool is genuinely bad? 
That's really funny. If it's genuinely bad, Andrew's almost certainly going to defend it and say it's not as bad as everything else. Whoa. I call things bad when they're bad. I'll probably say You gave Quantumania a 7 out of 10. Quantumania is not that bad. I, I mean, it's bad. I mean, but it's not because, like, Mad Web is bad. Uh-huh. Quantumania. So is, is, is this saying that Deadpool 3 is Madam Web bad? Yeah, if it's that, yeah. Brutal. I what? mean, honestly, it would probably be good for business. Like, what'd you give Quantumania? A five. Okay. So, like, I could be convinced of a six, and we're one point off. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, I'm not saying Quantumania is the best movie ever. I'm not, because it's, it, yeah. But it was just, it was there. I think people overreacted about Quantumania. Yes. You're not overreacting about, well, I think people overreact about Madam Web a little bit too. But Madam Web is bad. But if Deadpool is like universally bad. like That the, would be bad. It, the MCU is donezo, dude. Probably. Like. Probably. They would I'd be need really to, sad. They would need to call it. I wouldn't be sad. I, I, I don't know if I'd care that much, but it would be interesting. You don't want, you don't want. I to. hate the second one. Like, I don't like the second one actively Stupid. so like i don't know i don't think it's that much of a stretch dylan the patron who would win in a fight Ten thousand. Oh, by the way that was angel who would win in a fight Ten thousand rats or five thousand cats we talked about this in the car yesterday Ten thousand rats five thousand cats i think five thousand cat cat per two, two rats yeah. will win a cat can take out two rats easy yeah uh prime old captain america versus prime potential new captain america Old Captain America? Yeah, so I think that's like prime Captain America that went back in time with Peggy versus prime Captain America straight out of the ice. So we're not talking about like when he comes back and he's old. Not that old, no. So, But around that age. Like in game? It's either all the life experience or none of the life experience. But you could certainly make the argument for none of the life experience because, like, that one is going to be scrappier and have less to lose. I just don't know when this one is. This How is old is he? The strongest he is when he's with Peggy. Then that. Okay. You're taking life experience over nothing to lose. I would never fight somebody with nothing to lose, personally. That's an interesting argument. Would you rather have British intelligence or average intelligence? All right. British, obviously. Because you'd be more... Like, Who would win in a fight, Poe or Batman? With prep time. If Batman has prep time, it's Batman, obviously. Ember the patron, did you know that there is a Patreon where you can watch an extra episode a week? Wow. Let's go, Ember. I love the ad read. <laughs> the ad read. Two the, ad reads, one episode. Hell pa- yeah. The Patreon. Um, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, every single episode. Every single week, you get an extra episode on the Patreon. Every Friday. Shout so out. Yeah, shout Monday out Ember. and Friday. Yeah, shout out, Ember. Yeah. Uh, Alejandro1106, the patron, mm-hmm. is Hack Guy feeling left out since Dune 2 is one of the greatest movies of all time and he won't watch it, in parentheses, he should. You know, that's a good question, and I, I did just mention it. I don't really feel left out at all, but I think I might over time. I don't know. Maybe I'll just cave and watch it. Speaking of Dune, Ooh. send in all the Dune questions. Let's just bombard him with Dune questions. That'd be great. We'll have a Dune episode. Uh, Pidey, the patron, if the escape pod... Uh, roommates included were sent to survive in the deserts of Arrakis who would be most likely to survive and how all of our roommates yeah Angel the rug guy is I think, probably I think me and Angel would be the most resourceful why you I feel like I could ride a worm okay I feel like I could figure it out is it difficult to ride the worms or is it like the avatar thing it's very difficult to ride the worms and you, you don't you, you don't you don't plug yourself into them. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Cuz as soon as you get it, you have to call it and then it comes at you and you literally just have to like run off of a sand hill and jump and like throw hooks on it and like go through sand and then try to control it. Yeah, it's crazy. But Tim- Timothy's a skinny white boy. I'm a skinny white boy. That's like fair. I, like I, you know, I yeah. just feel like I could do it for some reason. I could I could get a Freudian girl. Yeah, I, I'll I'll use the the magician Riz and she'll teach me. Spoons or forks? Three, two, one. Spoons. Forks. I'm sorry. 
Did I upset you? Because you can do everything that a spoon can do with a fork. That's what I was thinking. I think the the quantity of items that are specifically made for spoons is smaller than for forks. We both agree that sporks are the worst thing ever. Yeah. All right. They're trying to do too much. And they're painful. Yeah, why are they so painful? They're like stabby in a way that forks for whatever reason aren't. If you went to prison, would you try to like smuggle in a spork? For yeah, like, for like kill somebody with a spork, yeah. Are are you upset that I picked fork? Not necessarily. Okay, I'm trying not to upset you this episode. Why? I don't know. It's very nice of you. Uh oh, is something happening? Official Alex Ware, the patron for Alex. Will the Lions go to the Super Bowl next year? No. Why not? I kind of think their window was this year. The NFC is going to be so much better next year. Bang. So it's one of the two conferences. It's the NFC and the AFC. And they made it to the NFC Championship against the 49ers and were winning. It was a one-score game. Like, they, they were essentially a touchdown away from the Super Bowl. And could they have beaten the Chiefs? Maybe. But the 49ers are better in every way. Uh, Not every way. Quarterback, I'd give it to Jared Goff. I'd give it to the Lions over Brock Purdy. But... They, they do have a better roster overall. The Sebastian patron. F. Mary Kill. Spider-Man, Superman, Batman. Okay. Obviously, bias aside, we are both killing Spider-Man. That might be the dumbest thing you've ever said. No. He would be a terrible husband. He is a nerd, so he's probably not think, that good of a lay. You think Bruce Wayne is going to be a good husband? Uh, Bruce Wayne is rich. Peter Parker cannot pay his bills. Okay, and you're not fucking Superman. You tell me with your with a straight face that you're not taking on those beautiful blues. Yeah, why? Okay, baby okay. blue All eyes. Right. You might have convinced me with the money argument. Maybe Peter Parker is but, by far the brokest of the three. Yeah, but and I, he's a you nerd. Don't, you don't. What's wrong with nerds? He's probably a shitty lay. Clark Kent. Uh, Clark Kent is both a nerd and. You see Superman. who Spider Man's pulling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Yes, absolutely, but like... But I know some of them are dying every once in a while. Lois Lane blows up one time, all right? One time. He also blows up her head with semen one time. We don't know if the radioactive semen or the super powerful semen is a real thing. We would have to experience that Are we talking about Mary Jane or Lois Lane? Lois Lane and Superman. Like, that is the one drawback to fucking Superman. Is that your head might explode? Because your head of- might explode from the semen or the radioactive semen. It might give you cancer. Yeah, but... No, that's Spider-Man. That's right. So then what's his semen? His semen gives you an illness, though, too. Does it? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's just assume that we're not getting AIDS or cancer when we're in love here. Okay. okay. So Again, I can't pass up an opportunity to have sex with Superman, and I can't pass up a billion dollars. Okay. You think... Okay. Batman's got a lot of... He's got some issues. Yeah. A, a lot of issues. Yeah, but have we ever seen him, like, hit... His partner or anything? No. Like, I'm not worried about domestic abuse. Like, I'm only worried about, like, mental stuff. You will, you will, if you're talking about... Toby Maguire fully assaults both Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy. In the Toby movies. Yes, but that's what I'm saying. Like, we have seen Spider-Man assault women. Rachel gets blown up. If you're talking about an absent father and not a great father... No, you've sold me. Rachel gets absolutely Yeah, exploded. she gets exploded. Mm-hmm. No, you've sold me there. That's a good so point. I'm saying, like, if we're talking about any sort of relationship whatsoever, Peter is absent and he has the responsibility thing, but he really cares about you and, and will care about a child. You think Bruce Wayne is given an F about you or the child you're going to have? Well, he definitely cares about Damien, his son. Yeah, but look how he turned out. I, I know, but like, and he's putting in the effort to change that. Yeah, but Damien's terrible. I don't want Damien to be my offspring. I'm with you, but th- that's why I'm there. To make sure that doesn't happen. I'm not Talia al Ghul. But that's the kind of person he chooses. And he doesn't even marry her. He's just hooking up with the I'm daughter with of an immortal guy. And I'm with you, but I really, out I, Damien. I really do not care if Batman cheats on me. I got Alfred. I, I want got a re- Wayne Manor. I want a relationship. I'm a romantic. 
So are you, you but you're not picking pa- Peter Parker. He is probably the worst relationship of these three. No. Just because Andrew, the money? And he's not going to be present. He's going to you miss You think he's every... going to be less present than Batman? Yes. Absolutely not. No. Spider-Man job is 24-7. Batman's is only at night. Sorry. Batman. And Spider-Man Sp- doesn't do the research that Batman does. Yeah. I can hypothetically help Batman and Alfred with research. I'm not really helping Spider-Man. Mary Spider-Man Jane's- really works alone 99% so you, of the time. So you want to be fighting crime? From the behind a computer? How many? How you often- just want the back, back computer. Yeah, that's going to be great. Fastest route. Yeah, I'm picking Batman to marry and I'm no, fucking No, Superman. you're wrong. You are wrong. Let us know because I think I'm no. clearly right here. Like Spider-Man, there are a lot of Spider-Man storylines that are actually like heavily influenced by him being in love and caring about the girls. That he, like that is not a big thing with Batman. Batman does not care. Batman cares about one thing and one thing only. Peter at least has the capability of being romantic and loving people. Again, I am. Both situations are shitty. They both have their cons, and I will give up. If we're going to argue that there are more cons with Batman, I will give up those cons to not only be financially comfortable, but a billionaire versus financially uncomfortable. What makes you think he's going to be sharing all that money with you? If I'm marrying him, I'm at least living in the house. So just because the house. Well, he might give you money, but he might just be like, if you're I'm married, funneling technically... all of that into the Batmobile. <laughs> technically... The like if we're married, then his assets are my assets, unless he gets me to sign a prenup. Freaking! So you're just gonna divorce him? That's also an option. That's not an option here. That's not what it asks. Again, I'm clearly marrying Batman. He could have separate bank accounts. Marriages I'm, do that all the time. I, again, like I'm never gonna have to worry about food or or being comfortable in the slightest. Like you don't know that. How many? Okay. We've seen people, So you're going to be lonely, but you can eat chicken parm at night. We've seen people, we've seen so many people suffer because they are friends with Spider-Man. And I know we've seen people suffer because they're friends or have relationships with Batman. But how many of those people have suffered financially? None. No. Why aren't you marrying Superman? Because Superman's not as rich as Batman. So literally just... You're only ranking them by by dollar amounts. That's wrong. Also, if I have a relationship with Superman, it's going to be more in the public. Why? Lois Lane gets kidnapped all the time. Superman always saves you. Why is he always saving you? I don't Okay, so my answer is... I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. My answer is marry Batman, F, Superman, um, Superman kill Batman. Peter Parker, Spider-Man. I can't believe that. Um, I just feel like Peter's more of an adventure. Yeah, an adventure that ends with death. Only if you're Gwen. I don't know. I I don't know. I think they're going to kill Gwen in Spider-Verse 3. Okay. Official Alex Ware, the patron. Dude. That was weird. Do you think that's going to pick up on the camera and the yeah. mics? We have crickets. Sorry. I said, I, have I said, dude, and the cricket was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it knows I've been working out. Um, would you be happy if there were not romances in the live action Avatar except for Sokka and Suki? Freaking no. Oh, yeah, that would upset you. Freaking no. It's very simple. Oh, I've got a good question for you. You will obviously, as I would be, be furious if they do Zutara. Of course. You would be furious. Of course. But they don't do Zutara. They do Su- uh, Zuko and, and May. I'm still upset, whatever you're about to say. Katang doesn't happen. Yeah, it's wrong. Interesting. It's wrong. So you're just upset. That is that your biggest gripe of the live action so far? It, it's one of them. I, I think that the changes to that one episode of The Cave of Two Lovers and Boomy were, were really bad, and yeah. they removed every semblance of Katang out of the entire season. Yeah. You're acting like, like people act like Katang is not a big thing or it's not throughout the series. No, it's a like, huge thing. It's, it's the a, last it's shot a, of the show, right? It's the last shot of the show. Like every season has so much for them. 
And like Zutara, like Katara and Zuko have like one moment and people like hang on to that and act like Katara is the wrong type of figure in Aang's life as if that's like a negative to having a healthy relationship that you are helpful to the person that you are being romantic with. But like there are plenty of examples of that in season one. There's plenty of examples of season two. It's not just a... The relationship between Aang and Katara is not just a throwaway thing that they did. It is throughout the entire show. And if you take that away, I think that's one of the, the biggest things you, you should... Like, in season two, one of the biggest climaxes ever is the, the Crossroads of Destiny, where Aang is, gets shot with lightning. And, like, he has the whole th reason that was a problem and the fighting went on for that long and, like, they lost necessarily is because Aang loved Katara so much. And you're just going to take all that away because frick you? No, frick you. Not frick me, frick you, Netflix. I think it's an age thing. They're worried about it being creepy. Well, then they should have cast people differently or made it at a different time. Interesting. Like, it's not that difficult to just do the show. After seeing that Deadpool 3 broke the most watched trailer in 24-hour record. Did it really? I think so. Oh, I didn't do know Do you that. guys think it would be the highest grossing R-rated movie? No. Really? No, I don't. Do you know what the highest grossing rated R movie is? Joker. Do you know what's second? Deadpool. No. It's a new one. Last year. Big movie. Last year R rated big movie? Mm hmm. Give me another hint. Gonna win a lot of Oscars. I got nothing for you. Are you serious right now? Did I like it? You, I think you gave it an 8 or 9 out of 10. It's one of the biggest movies of like the last five years. Are you serious? I, I have no idea. You're, you're killing me. Kendrick Lamar? Sorry. I definitely think you're thinking in your mind that it's not rated R, but it's so obviously rated R. What are the movies that came out last Oppenheimer. year? Oppenheimer. Oh my gosh. That was ridiculous. Oppenheimer. Thank you. Yeah. That's the second. You don't think it's going to be, like, if it's good, if it's good, it will make No Way Home money, in my opinion. Maybe. Mm, I just don't think it's going to be the maybe highest not. grossing ever. But it really, it only needs to, like, get slightly over, bill over a billion to beat Joker. Joker is, like, 1.1. Like, You're convincing me. I, like, Deadpool, it, it, Deadpool is a big enough brand bringing back Wolverine, like, mm-hmm. I, if the trailer did that well, I didn't know the trailer did that well. I, yeah, yeah, it depends on how the well trailer they, did that well for us. Yeah, it depends on how well they do the marketing because, like, the marketing for No Way Home was crazy. Absolutely, and I don't think it's gonna be like that. Just, You're right. Question for both of you. <gasps> Excellent. Keep four of these eight Disney Pixar movies and cut four. Okay. Up. Okay. Nemo, Ratatouille, Toy Story three. The Lion King, Bambi, The Little Mermaid, Wally. I already have three of the four I'm cutting. Yeah, I, I, would you like to go first? Yeah. Okay. Do a, Easy do, do cutting. Do a keep and then cut. Okay. I'm going to obviously keep Nemo. This is the best movie on this list. I'm obviously going to cut Bambi. That's yep. the worst mm -hmm. movie on this list. I'm going to keep Toy Story 3, which is the second best movie on this list. And I'm going to be cutting The Little Mermaid, which is the second worst movie on this list. Um, I'm... I'm... Mm, I'm probably, I'm definitely keeping The Lion King. I'm probably going to have to cut. I'm probably going to have to cut up. And then I'm going to, I think I like Ratatouille. So I'm going to keep Ratatouille and cut Wally. Isn't Wally was the tough one. Isn't Toy Story 2 on there? Toy Story 3. Oh, I thought it was Toy Story Two. That makes it a lot more difficult. Yeah. So obviously, Toy you're, Story Three's got to stay. For obviously, me. you're you're an idiot. But so I've got Nemo, Toy Story Three, Ratatouille, and, Lion and the Lion King, and I cut the up. Little Mermaid up. Bambi. Bambi. Wally. And Wally. Okay, so easy keep for me is up. Uh, easy cut for me is Bambi. Easy keep for me is Lion King. Easy cut is the Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I'm probably gonna have to keep. Nemo and Toy Story 3 and cut Ratatouille and Wally. Well, yeah. So, Only difference is you kept up which and is, got rid of Ratatouille. Um, how many movies do you think you've seen in your life? According to my letterbox, it's like just under a thousand. Yeah. But every, it feels like all, every week I'm talking to somebody about a movie 
And they're like, what'd you give that out of 10? I'm like, you know what? I don't know. Let me check Letterboxd. And then I don't have it logged. Yeah. I log movies all the time that I like have have it logged. So yeah. it's probably a little bit over a thousand. Yeah. I'd probably say somewhere in that range, maybe a little less. Yeah. Uh, Elena Mav, Mav, the patron. Uh, do you like the casting of the OG Fantastic Four or the recent casting? I don't like either, but I trust the MCU because if they've been good at one thing the whole time it's been casting, even with the new stuff that I don't like, I'm not the biggest fan of Shang-Chi. Simu Liu is fabulous. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, but I think Catherine Newton is really good for that role. Like, like casting, I think unanimously across the board, they're really good. So even though I don't like Pedro Pascal for Reed Richards, or I don't like um, uh, uh, Joseph Quinn for the Human Torch, um, you know, I, I kind of trust them. When the OG Fantastic Four, the OG Reed Richards is fine. Chris Evans, I think, is pretty good. Honestly, I think he might be really good. Like, oh, Michael Chiklis is really good. Really, the only one I don't like is Jessica Alba. You know what? You've sold me. I think I like the OG Fantastic Four casting. Well, I sold you? By, with your yeah. silence. You were just looking at me the whole time. No, yeah, I did that. What do you think? No, yeah. OG, because I was... I was telepathing it to you. Telepathing? Telepathying it to you? Definitely not telepathying. What if I want it to be telepathying? You got me. I'm telepathing something to you right now. What am you I are. What am I saying? Penis. Kind of. It was your mother. Damn. Um, DJ4177, the patron. What is your guy's personal scariest horror movie? It is also one of my favorites. Hereditary effed me up. Hereditary is real scary. Dude. That I mean, just the last 20 minutes. But you know what's my favorite scene in that movie? Other than the last 20 minutes, which are obviously amazing. I adore. It's the first, and it's really the only jump scare in the movie, is one of the first scenes after the funeral. And uh, she opens a door, and she closes it, and behind it is like a mo- her mother. And she looks like a ghost, and she's just sitting there like this. And I was like, oh my gosh! I love that scene. Hereditary is probably my pick as well. Yeah, I, I, there's only been like literally like less than a handful of movies that have made me like look away from the screen. And Hereditary did that more than any other movie, I think. Just during that last sequence with the mom where she's banging her head on the ceiling and is on the wall and then is crawling through the air. Him. Yeah, and then and then she's doing this and cutting her own head off or whatever in the attic. Like every single one of those scenes, like I could, I like, yeah. I can watch it now, but... It's so good. Kenny Bled, the patron. Keep two, but the other three are wiped from history. Anakin, Voldemort, Spider-Man, Aang, Caesar. This is the hardest question I think I've ever gotten on this (laughs) podcast. Can I I see it? What are the things? Wow, You're going to kill me. I have to cut two and keep three? Or keep keep two and the other three are wiped. I think I've got my two. Oh, my gosh. Wow, wait. I don't know if I can do that. Oh, wow. This is tough. You want to go? It sucks. I have to get rid of Voldemort. He's by far my favorite Harry Potter character, but he is gone. No question. Yeah, me too. I'm sorry to you. Aang's gone. Yeah, that's the one that's tripping me up. Yeah, Aang is gone for me, right? It's it's Caesar, Anakin, and Spider-Man is so difficult. I have to go and cut Caesar yep. because Caesar is in three movies I adore. Yep. Spider-Man is in countless properties I adore. And Anakin is in probably my two favorite movies of all time on top of countless things I adore. Yeah. So, yeah, easy cuts for me are Voldemort and Caesar. Yes. So I'm left with the last, like, basically, your Caesar is my Aang. Exactly. Like I, I, like he's obviously in three seasons of television that you just adore, and he is, but he's not your favorite. That's why yeah, it was yeah, so but, easy yeah. for me to cut Aang. Yeah, but the, the show wouldn't exist without him. Of course, right? It like I, I just feel like I can't get rid of Darth Vader, and I'm obviously not getting rid of Spider Man. But like personally, I think I would go Spider Man and Aang. Then do that. 
But, you don't love Star Wars as much as I do. Yeah, and but, especially with like all the new stuff coming out with Aang and like my personal relationships just with the show and everything. We spoke to Koi Jandro, friend of the show recently, mm-hmm. um, and he said that he likes Star Wars, but like he doesn't quite get the religion thing. And I was like, oh, that's me. Yeah. Like I'm the religion. Like Star Wars is like a religion to me. So that's why it was no brainer to go with Anakin. Yeah. But you're not really a Star Wars as religion guy. I mean, I, I mean, I, I love it, and like again, I think Anakin's one of the best characters ever, and I love Empire, and I love A New Hope, and everything. But Avatar's but, like your religion. Yeah, exactly. You love Avatar. So if I got to keep three, then Anakin would obviously be the next one. Yeah, solid. That was impossible. Eddie, the patron, not a question, but a deeper dive into how you and Alex met. Did we just talk about this on the? Pa- was it on the Patreon? Or something? I don't know. Maybe because I haven't been here long enough, or something that is okay for you guys to open up about. Yeah. Sure. Do you want me to? You can start. Yeah, so I was at a... Oh, we did just talk about this, it feels like. But it's fine. We'll do another one. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to have to clean that up. You're rude. <laughs> that wasn't even... <clears throat> All right. So, uh, how's your arm? Ah! Okay. So, the way we met in detail is I met this gentleman, Matt. Magic of Matt at a convention that I didn't want to be at and that he didn't want to be at. Are you raising your hand because you'd like to talk? Oh, go. Why is your hat backwards today? Um, I thought it went better with my fit. Continue. Uh, my hat's been backwards before. Yeah, this is the first time I've only really noticed it, though. I don't really... Do you I- remember I'm wearing the red hoodie and I've got a hat on backwards and in the like thumbnail, you cut off the back of the hat and I look like Aladdin? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, mm-hmm. I've worn backwards hats before. I and just I just try not to like look at you. No, you're good. Yeah. So I was at this convention with uh Magic of Matt, uh, and neither of us wanted to be there, so we really, really bonded. Um he was a roommate at the time here at the house. I was not, I was back home in Florida. And uh uh, I'm a big Los Angeles Rams fan. I was coming out here that week, like literally four days after I met him uh, for a Rams game. And he was like, where are you staying? And I was like, oh, you know, hotel by the stadium. And he said, cancel that. Come stay at my house for free. And I said, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll save the money. Came and stayed stayed with y'all. That's how I met you because um, you had already lived here. I didn't know who you were. And my girlfriend, Rachel, happened to be a pretty large fan of yours. Um, at the time and uh, we hit it off pretty instantly just because we share so many interests mm-hmm. um, despite having different opinions on those things and uh, eventually I moved out here for a business opportunity separate of the podcast yeah so yeah and that, then we that, that's the basically it and then yeah. so he moved out here and he moved in and now we live together but we met like what like people think we know we've known each other for a very long time and like we were high school friends or something we met three or four months before we started the podcast this is correct yeah so. we met in early september around september 8th because that was the day of the game so probably we met september 6th or 7th and uh um, started it in january and we our first episode we filmed before january 15th yeah and uh yeah so we've, we've known each other like a year and a half mm-hmm and we've lived together a year, just yeah. recently. You okay, buddy? Yeah, you're just going to have to give me a massage after this. I got you. Maybe that's on the on Patreon. On the Patreon, yeah. <laughs> I like that. You ready for... The patrons like that. Oh, yeah. You ready for my favorite segment? Would they survive? Yeah, we've actually stopped keeping it from each other that we're doing this. So now uh, we're just talking about it. But I, I, don't, I don't know what you're going to say. No. And do you're, you think... By what percentage do you think the squirtles on your laptop are cooler than me? Because I'm looking at them right now. They're so awesome. They're so it's, cool. It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Squirtles. Yeah, they got like the sunglasses on and the the swag. Yeah, and they're they look so confident. It's so. I good. watch Crazy Stupid Love. I'm doing a re-review. Yeah. Okay. Wait, can I do it with you? Yeah, let's do it. Yay! Ah, so cute. Okay. Wait. Let me just clarify. No. You cannot. I forget my score exactly. I'm oh, just making... I thought you were going to ask me a question. No. I thought you were going to ask if there's something you could talk about in relation to this. No, obviously not. No, I was checking my score. Okay. All right. We are doing. Isn't a... that very obvious? That you wouldn't? No. I know what we're not supposed to talk about, but like considering. Do you get what I'm? I'm trying to telepathying. Tele- tele- this... Telepathying. I'm trying to telepathying this to you. You're not getting what I'm putting down. 
Yeah, no, I, I mean, to me it was obvious, but things like this are not obvious to you. No, 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 no. Not to not talk about it. Okay. I know what you don't want me to talk about. That's right. obvious. Mm -hmm. Isn't it obvious to the audience what we yeah, are oh, talking oh, about? Oh, frick! <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah, because, oh, that's how yes. we... Yes! Oh, I gotta cut all this? <laughs> no! This is hilarious! Oh, uh, that's funny. Oh, my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> As you were saying that, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 we'll see if anybody gets it. Okay. Um, Here is our rear review for Crazy Stupid Love. Yeah. Three, two, one. Seven Nine point five. Ten. Yeah, you like it a lot more than me. I love it. I love it too. Out of ten, by the way. Yeah. So that. Yeah. I. I just had so much fun. With yeah. It. It's great. I think every character is great. Mm -hmm. Emma Stone's great. Mm -hmm. Steve Carell is so good. Mm -hmm. Ryan Gosling. Mm -hmm. He's the best. The, the whole time, from when he's introduced and then he takes Steve under his wing or mm -hmm. whatever and is slapping him in the face mm -hmm. and is like, just telling him what to do. I was like. I need some of this. No, he's like the best dude ever. <laughs> like, wait, there's a moment where they're at the Century City thing, and he walks up, and he's like, "Give me your shoes," and just like the and like Steve keeps trying to talk to him, and he just ignores him and keeps asking him questions. It, yeah. I had to pause it and run it back like two or three times. I thought it was so funny. I was like, "I need some of this confidence in mm -hmm. my life. I'm gonna start." Being where I'm not gonna be a womanizer, but mm. I'm gonna be more confident. That yeah. like it was so funny. No, it's so good. And then the twist, you you watched me. I watch watched you. I came downstairs. You were watching it on the couch, and I came downstairs because I could hear it. I was upstairs. I could hear where you are in the movie, and I was like, "Okay, he's surprising Julianne Moore. I need to get downstairs because I wanted to watch your reaction." And you were like, "Oh, this is what this scene is from." Because I've seen so I've seen the scene. Yeah, before. Of course, everybody's seen the scene, but it's so good. I was hoping you hadn't seen the scene because it's so good. Um, but how good is Ryan Gosling like at the end in that scene with when Kevin Bacon shows up? He's like, hey, you caused a lot of pain to my, my friend. friend. It just it's sucks. so him. good. I love that. It's so good. Oh, it was so good. Here's my big issue with the movie. My big gripe. I do not like how it resolves. I do not like the ending. The ending is perfect. Sorry. Why? Why don't you like about it? I just like, I don't like... The Steve Carell, you'll never be good enough angle, followed immediately by, oh, you know, you're kind of all right. That like what, ma what what makes you think there's an angle of him? He'll, he'll never be good enough. He says that in the bar. He says you'll never be good enough for her. Oh, and so then, you don't want a character growth? But it, there is no growth. It's like the next scene he sees him at the yeah, it's, it's, the it's, school graduation, and he's like, "All right, you're good." Yeah, it's a little fast, but there still is the moment of him seeing his son saying, like, being like, uh, like, being depressed about like, and not believing in true love or fighting for the person that you love and all that, mm -hmm. and him coming down and giving that big speech. Probably changed his mind to the, and realize it made him realize like my son is trying to do this. I'm trying to do this for my my wife, and now Ryan is trying to do this for my daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a little quick, but I, I don't think it it the the resolution itself is bad. Maybe they could have fleshed it out a, little, a tiny bit more or stretched it out a little bit more. But it's not bad. It bothers me. It bothers me a lot. That's like my one main issue. That probably knocks it down maybe one or two points for me. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I don't That's I don't crazy. like how quick it is. It really bothered me watching it for the first time. And I just rewatched it on a plane like a couple months ago and it bothered me again. No, I mean it is a little fair because like the, the the number one, it is fast, and number two, the bar scene that you're talking about mm -hmm. is pretty brutal. It wasn't like It's brutal. It wasn't like he was like kind of second guessing it and still was like, No, he was like, You never talk to my daughter. And it feels I know that it's like different. I'm not a father. I don't know what it's like to be a to have a daughter and to like feel the protection for her, but that scene because it's a twist that Emma Stone is his daughter. Sorry, spoiler alert for the movie from 2011. Um, uh, uh, because it's a twist, it feels very out of character for Steve. Yes, like Steve Carell is so like loves Ryan loves Ryan and literally on the phone call conversation he's like you haven't been talking to me but I love you buddy we'll get drinks soon or something like that yeah and but and then like like immediately I get the next scene he's freaking out that he's dating his daughter because he knows he's a womanizer and this and that but like I don't know it does feel out of left field as a character for Steve Carell in my opinion watching it, it the intensity of it may be a little bit sure but um 
I, you know, also the whole time I was watching it, I was like, so I, so I'm, I'm, I'm Steve, right? With the clothes, like it was, I was like, this is how people see me. But how much better did he look? <laughs> like that could be you. When he got like new clothes, yes. like a haircut and stuff. I was like, oh, that could be you. It was so funny. And the Marissa Tomei stuff was really funny. So funny. Uh, yeah, Damn. I was, I was, she's so hot. She's so hot. I, I was laughing and so was Ryan Gosling. When he takes his shirt off and she's oh. like, he's like, can I put my shirt back on? And me and Emma at the same time were like, no. <laughs> like, no, you cannot. Um, no, Ryan Gosling does nothing but grow on me. Um, grow on you? You haven't loved him since day one? What have I seen him in before? What was the first thing you saw Ryan Gosling in? I can't remember. Like, I've just seen him a lot more recently because I watched La La Land last year. I watched mm -hmm. Barbie last year. Mm -hmm. I watched this just now. Mm -hmm. He's in the new Fall Guys movie, and I think the trailers for that look hilarious. So mm -hmm. I've just gotten a lot more of him in the last year than I ever remember seeing him in before. You've never seen Drive? No. Drive is really good. No. You would really like Drive. And you, you haven't seen either Blade Runner movie or just you haven't seen 2049? We'll do that. Those movies are incredible. Yeah. And you loved Dune. It's a sequel. It's Denis. Yeah. No, I keep hearing that. Yeah. Like, So, um, yeah. It, it, I'm not saying, like, it might become, you know, not one of my, maybe one of my favorite movies. I think I, I like Crazy Stupid Love. Yeah. I but... Really Here's a question of the day. Your favorite rom-com is? About time. It has a touch about time. It's not about time. But, so, I watch Love Actually. I like Love Actually. Which is by the same people as About Time. Yeah. I like Crazy Stupid Love way more than Love Actually. I agree. Yeah. There's too much going on in Love there's Actually. There's too much going on, and there's some stuff that, like, didn't need to be in there, mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. But Love Actually is still good. But About Time, like, About Time has the rom-com stuff. Well, About Time is not as funny, number one. Crazy Stupid Love is way funnier. But About Time has the my whole philosophy about how you live your life and spend your days and carpe diem and, and life is good and stuff like that. And, like, the time travel stuff is just, it hits unlike anything ever hits. And the dad stuff is yeah. so good. And the music. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't really have anything negative to say about Crazy Stupid Love. I can't think of anything I didn't like. Solid. I'm glad you liked it so much. I knew you would. Would they die? Would they survive? What the heck are we calling this segment? Y'all let us know. My new favorite segment as of the last couple weeks. We're going to start off with an easy one. This one should be quick. It is Timothy Chalamet uh -huh. versus Prime World War Destroying a Moon Hulk, who is also on the same team as like Prime Superman. Comics. Just Timothy. Just Timothy Chalamet as he exists currently. Yeah, so Timothy. Hilarious. He's getting hilariously obliterated, and I, for one, am gonna have a front row seat. No, I think I think he will somehow gain power from the levels of stupidity of your hatred for him. So like the stupider your hate and the stupider your takes about him, the stronger he gets. And based on that strength level and that power level, Hulk won't even come close. You know what? The, you bring I, thought, up, I thought you were about to say, you know what? Freak you. I thought that's what you were about to say. <laughs> you, you, you're bringing up something that I, I really want to talk about on the pod. Well, that's what because we're Because that was rude what you just did to me. No, I'm defending Timothy. I think that's quite noble of me. What is it with people? Haters should exist. People, if you're in the public eye, you should be allowed to be hated. There are a lot of people on the internet upset with me right now that I hate a guy enough to not watch his movies, even though I've never met him and never had an interaction with him. And I'm sure he's a nice guy and this and this and this. People, it's okay for people to be haters. Skip Bayless has made a career off of hating LeBron James. Just because I feel that's wrong, because I love LeBron James, doesn't mean that he doesn't, like, deserve... People should be hated. You and I are hated a lot. I don't fault those people that hate us. You're doing it right now. What am I doing? You just cut out all the haters for being upset at you and hating you for hating Timothy. So they should be allowed to do but that. But they're like, you shouldn't be allowed to be a hater. The people that No, they're just calling you out for being stupid about your hatred. I'm done with you. And you're calling Timothy out. I'm done with you. <laughs> you don't like I'm my logic? It. I logic the frick out of you. I don't like And you're you. upset about it. It was a telepathy thing. I don't like you. I was telepathying it to you. 
What am I telepathing it to you right now? Tilapia. Tilapia? What mm-hmm. am I doing? You're doing something to that tilapia because you're a weirdo. No. Nice. He got it right. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I got the tilapia yeah, up here, no. baby. All right. Here's a slightly harder one. Every horse on the planet, there are roughly 60 million versus 2 million bears. That is 30 horses per bear. Horses. Horses. You think the overwhelming number? Yeah. I and think horses are strong as shit. Every time I see a horse, I am reblown. Because they're so big. I'm Yeah. They're so big. Yeah. Like, not all of them, but like, just like you go to Disney World and they're like, pruck, 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 yeah. down Main Street and yeah. they're pulling something. I'm like, that thing is a two dinosaur. of me. Yeah. And, and like, it Honestly, can three or four. Like, yeah, I think one, like five horses could take a bear. Just kick the frick out of it. Really? Yes. Five horses? It's, a bear is taking down two of them and it's biting or whatever, but three more come up behind it and just kicking the crap out of it. One kick from a horse, any any living thing on this planet is having a problem. But horses are easily flustered, and they are one of the scaredest animals on the planet. A fucking paper bag is flowing in the wind, and they, they're they going to kill somebody. Yeah, but have you seen them kick people? Uh, because, because they're of scared. Paper bags. If they're scared of a bear, they're going to kick it. I'm I'm also operating under under the the, the, the logic that they are, are fighting. Mm-hmm. Okay. A bear definitely isn't taking down thirty. Yeah, I will give you that. And like, ooh, if they're ooh, coordinated, they'll just move faster. The bears. Mm, they're yes. just going to stampede. They're just going to run. <gasps> yeah, but that's a lot more than thirty, and that's only one lion. Just saying. Yeah, I know, but if six million horses are charging towards two million bears, I think... And it's, the, and it's when, 60 million. When the dust settles... You, you're selling me. There's going to be a bunch of bears there. You got it. You got it. And then their little bear sons are going to come up and be like, no. And then the uncle bear is going to be He's like, you got to leave. going to take over the pride of yeah. bears. He's yeah. going to be the top fisherman. And then they're going to sing a Kuda Matata. Mm-hmm. Next. Uh, this is ridiculous. Okay. I need a preamble for this one. The first two weren't. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I love the ridiculousness. I love it. Keep going. This is ridiculous. This is not my, usually (laughs) I do all of mine and I did every other one here, but this has been a large debate in our discord, our Patreon our Patreon Discord, every single Discord you can imagine. This was brought about by Craig, a known patron. Shout out. Shout out, Craig. And he has been arguing pretty much alone in favor for the stupider side of this. I hate that I have to even bring this up. Okay. I I cannot wait to call him stupid. The entire Brotherhood of Mutants. So Magneto. Is this the Jedi thing? Yes. Oh, no. Juggernaut. You know. Mm Mm-hmm. 20 to 30 mutants. Mm -hmm. If you want, I'll give you 100. Versus the Grand Army of the Republic. Including the Jedi, right? Including the 10,000 Jedi. Yeah. Including the millions of clones. Including all of the ships. I thought it was just the Jedi Order. Even then, it's like... Craig's main argument is that Magneto can solo. Because without... With Magneto, he can... Essentially, because of the magnetism, the lightsabers are not a factor, and all of the ships are technically not a factor. I think Magneto is the most overrated OP, overpowered character of all time. Overrated and overpowered are not synonyms. You need to explain. No, I can explain both. Overrated because they made him overpowered in the movies. Do you think... I don't know Magneto lore, but I think they made it just seem like he could just, like do anything without sweating at all like he just lifts an entire bridge and he just grabs all these missiles is that what he can do all the time in every iteration of him in like a prime iteration like prime comics that's a pretty he can do more than what you see in the movies but here is my issue but like so can hulk are we talking like exactly here is my issue even if i give you prime magneto There are many, many comics that I have read where Magneto's powers are described as it it is an intense level of concentration. And because he's been doing it for so many years and because of his uh, uh, slowed aging, he's like 
sometimes hundreds or thousands of year old, years old, depending on the iteration and how far we are in the future. Um, so like a prime Magneto is going to be able to take down a Star Destroyer without a threat, without a sweat. That is true. The issue is, is that there are thousands of Venator Star Destroyers. Right. And in my opinion, because it's a concentration thing, he cannot do all of them at once. Right. And also like, there has to be a limit, right? Like, can he control all metal throughout the entire universe? No. So there has to be a limit of length of like how far away the metal is, number one. Yes. And number two, how much he can do. Like, and also like if there's a link thing, you don't think a blaster or like a Death Star or some sort of like any type of weapon can hit him from far away where he can't see it and he can't control. Like you think he can stand on Earth and control all metal on the entire planet? Exactly. I don't think he can do the that. The Star Destroyers can be outside of the atmosphere, yeah, totally out of his range, and shoot a blast that takes out like Tokyo. Like also, Jedi's do have the Force, exactly, which is Magneto, but on everything. Exactly, <laughs> they could easily snap his neck. Easily. If you take away the Jedi's lightsaber, it does not mean they are out of the fight. The argument is... Yoda shouldn't even have one. That the Brotherhood of Mutants, you can also consider that they may have Wanda and they may have Quicksilver. R yeah. Who are both also problems, but not when it's millions of clones, 10,000 Jedi, and all of these ships. Yeah, no, I think... And if you somehow get rid of all of that, you think Palpatine's... An easy boss battle? Yeah, no. Like, there, there's a couple boss battles that you just like are gonna have a problem with. Um, you're not beating Yoda. Yeah, I, I don't know every single mutant, but like obviously the big ones I know, like Magneto's gonna be a problem. Wanda's gonna be a problem. Quicksilver's gonna be a problem. Wanda's fragile. Yeah, you just have to get her once. Like Wolverine took her down in the movie. He just had have to have healing. You're thinking of Jean Grey. Oh, I am. Well, Jean Grey's a problem, too. Yes, but Jean Grey isn't a Brotherhood of Mutants. These She's are the nuts? bad guys. Oh, it's not all mutants? It's not Professor X or any of the good ones. It's not the X-Men. It's what? the Brotherhood of Mutants. So it's Okay, like, add them in. Are you still taking... The Great Army of the Fallen That's Fallen. what I thought that was... Professor X is a problem. But even... Okay, well... Professor X could, like, stop people. Yeah, but that also has a limit. Yes. Like, in Cerebro, if he has that, like, he can maybe, like, do more. Yeah. Like, he could just think and kill people with that. Yeah. But, like, if he's just out there without that, like, he could maybe stop. He's not going to stop the whole army. Yeah. I still, and all the Jedi. It's okay. You going against Anakin and Obi-Wan and yeah. Mace and yep. Yoda. Yep. Hey, Craig, you're stupid. Mm-hmm. Love you, though. Love you. All right. Here's my favorite one here. So I wanted to find somebody that could fight Charles Muntz. So I got Charles Muntz here and he's in a death match against, it would be unfair. Obviously he would lose to Finn McMuscle. Sure. So sure. I thought Charles Muntz versus Finn McMuscle's voice actor, Michael Caine, who is 90 years old, but a Korean war veteran. True. But Charles Muntz is pretty scrappy. He is. He's killed, he's, he's killed people. He's killed people and he's trying to kill Carl Fredrickson. Mr. Fredrickson. But I can't remember. Can you remind me the sword fight with the thing? He wins. How like how does that fight end? I think he gets like knocked through a, a door or something and then the dogs show up and yeah, I, I don't know. But like Carl Fredrickson is using his cane as a sword and yeah. they're like he like swings the sword up and his back gets hurt and stuff he's really old so is Michael Caine Michael Caine's so old he had to retire from acting yeah I'd have to see how like Michael Caine's but status right now but <laughs> like Carl Fredrickson I mean uh, Charles Muntz didn't really do anything mad impressive in that movie but he's been out in the wilderness and he's been able to survive by technology and his smarts and the dogs and everything but look at these pictures of michael kane participating in the korean war yeah well if it was prime michael kane how badass are these yeah dude he's a g look up a picture of him now dude yeah you probably can't find one of him not in bed just kidding I just think it comes down to who's scrappier. 
I use scrappiness in these decisions a lot. A lot, yeah. It's probably your prime. But like, I'm, I'm, I think they're both the same age. I think they're both the same amount of like physical uh, attributes. So I'm just gonna go with the guy. Well, I don't. I was gonna say the guy who's killed more people, but we don't know what Michael Caine did in that war. He probably killed a lot of people. Yeah, but like, I'm going. I'm going Charles Muntz. Interesting. I think I'm going Michael Caine. That's fair. Um, last one before the Hunger Games. Okay. Current Jake Gyllenhaal, the actor who is absurdly buff for the movie Roadhouse, uh-huh. or current Hugh Jackman, the actor who is absurdly buff for Deadpool and Wolverine. Jake Gyllenhaal. Really? Yes. Ah. You're going to look up their heights? Yeah, and wait. You also have to consider their ages. Do you know how old Hugh Jackman is? He's older. Jake Gyllenhaal. Age. He's 43. Jake? <laughs> yeah. Hugh. Yeah, but Hugh Jackman's got four, four inches on him. But Hugh Jackman's 55. 55. 12 years. And I, I think Jake's more ripped than him right now. You've not seen Hugh Jackman recently. Dude, I love Hugh Jackman. I just don't... I, I just... I don't think anybody's more ripped than Hugh Jackman right now. I think Jake Gyllenhaal's got it. And also, he's training for... Like, I know Hugh Jackman is training for Wolverine, which is like a fighting movie, but Roadhouse is like a UFC movie, right? I'm with you. I think he did some training for that. Yeah, but like, you're talking about training... Like, like look at this. This is this is not human. Do you see the This picture? is This picture's from like a couple months ago. Bro, I love him so much. That is kind of crazy. Like, that's not... Like, we've seen the Jake Gyllenhaal videos and pictures. But, like, that's not human. And here is the thing. We got to take their, like, career experience. Like, Wolverine... Oh, you're adding Hugh? That's a good ad. They're both on your daddy's list. Yeah, Hugh Jackman is now on the list of daddies. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, has to, already to been his there. credit, has been on here for a while. Yeah, because of the Roadhouse stuff. Yeah. So, here's the thing. Do you think... Take Hugh Jackman from here to here. Do you think he weighs more than me? <laughs> that's really funny. Based on that picture, I that, think it's close. That's really funny. Oh my god, he definitely weighs more than me. Do you weigh more than me? How much do you weigh? Like one thirty. Oh, you weigh less than me. But I haven't weighed myself in a long time. I might mm-hmm. be fat now. Who knows? Mm, who knows? Mm, who knows? Yeah. So the thing is, is like Hugh Jackman. I think is a bit bigger, and he has like more experience with the fighting movies, doing the fighting choreography, everything. Like. You know, even, mm. like, not, yeah, Hugh Jackman's a dancer and he's been on Broadway and this and that, but, like, he did Real Steel. He did fighting movies. Like, I know that this isn't I, I Jake think, Gyllenhaal's first I think time, 12 years of age or whatever it is is, is, more the of an, is the difference more than four inches. We, I never checked the weight. Do you want me to check the weight? The weight might matter. If, give, me, give me the Hunger Games. This is a battle of underdogs like underrated kings sure all of these am i on there no all of these people like participated in something that they were supposed to lose in some capacity Mm -hmm. and won you're describing me why didn't you put me on here what have you won i became a youtuber doesn't sound like much of a win especially in most cultures well in my culture you'll understand when i get to it you ready i should be on this list you're an underdog no. Look at you. I appreciate you. You got, you got a girlfriend. Yeah, you're right. No one thought that was going to happen. That's true. And she's very hot. <laughs> exactly. Underdog story, brother. You calling Rachel hot? <laughs> Watch it. No. Watch it. Don't call her ugly either. Watch it. Do you know my philosophy on this? I don't you know. know. We've, we've talked, ever talked about this. We've talked about We this. haven't talked about this on air. I, you're, I have like a staunch, you do not talk about your friend's girlfriends, like under any circumstance. Because but, of, there's a but, right? No. Oh. Be, there, either way, you're losing. Because if I show you a picture of Rachel, yeah. and I'm like, huh? And you're like, yeah, bro, nice work. She's hot. What? Now you, you get the hots from my girlfriend? That's a problem. Yeah. If you're a close friend, that's a problem. Like, would I feel comfortable leaving you in a room with her, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah. Or if you call her ugly... Dude, what the heck? You think my girlfriend's ugly? Yeah. We got a problem. So there's there's no like middle line? There's no win scenario. 
I don't care if like some people call her hot. Like if I don't have like a relationship like that with you, but like good friends, if any of the roommates called Rachel hot or ugly, there'd be a problem. I don't think you should comment on other people's girlfriends. I think she's average. D- don't say that. <laughs> like, don't comment on her appearance. Yeah, no. You do find her very funny. She's hilarious. Yeah. Can I comment on your mom's appearance? Yes. She doing it for you? She did last night. Okay, keep Ooh. Up. Here we go. We got underrated. We got some... Do un- you watch Brave and the Bold? That's the Brave and the Bold Batman. Yeah, I knew that. Yes. I saw it. Once? Yes. I used to watch it with my dad. It's good. I love the blue. I don't think they'll ever be able to do it in live action, though. All right, you ready? I'm just going to spitball them. There are 20 of these in this Hunger Games of underdogs. You and me. David. Montgomery? No, David and Goliath. Oh, okay. The emus from the emu war. No? Nope. Australia waged war on some emus back in the day, and they lost. The emus beat the Australian military. Fact. Great. Kurt Warner. Will Smith, specifically in The Pursuit of Happiness. I'm not talking about the real guy. I'm specifically talking about Will Smith. Uh, Brock Purdy. The 1980 Winter Olympics U.S. hockey team. The Miracle on Ice team. Rudy. Neville Longbottom. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Pi from The Life of Pi. The Tortoise from The Tortoise and the Hare. Rocky Balboa. Annie. America Chavez. The Ford Company, specifically in Ford v. Ferrari. Uh, the United States Colonies against England, Nick Foles, Logan Paul, the dodgeball team from Dodgeball, and the Karate Kid. What the frick am I ranking here? Who's winning in this death match? You put an entire company on there. I did. I also put a hockey team on here. I also put the entire U.S. military from 1776 led by George Washington. Yeah, so I'm just going that. You're, you think they're beating Obi-Wan Kenobi? That's a good point. There are overpowered people on here. You didn't listen to me. I saw it. No, as soon as no, I no, said the no, hockey team, you no. got upset. No, I. when Obi-Wan was on there, I took note of that. I forgot. Okay, so let's get rid of Can some... we get rid of Brock Purdy first? Okay. Thank you. He's gone. Can I delete him? Yep. Okay. Dead. Uh, David's also dead. Well, David's got God on his side. He's got God on his side. And... and- and a slingshot. Goliath is a giant. Hypothetically, Goliath would take out a lot of these guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that David isn't fighting for the Israelites and like the representation. So no of God. divine yeah, intervention, intervention with no. the David. So David's dead. David's dead. Rudy, <laughs> Giuliani. You've never seen Rudy? Nope. <laughs> it's a football movie. It stars Samwise Gamgee. Gamgee. It's still Gamgee. Or Patton Oswalt. Sean Astin. It's one of them. It's Patton Oswald or Sean Astin. Okay, Pie is out. The tortoise is out. Annie, like Pie the- is out. Pie is out. Pie defeated a fucking uh, a tiger. He didn't defeat it. He kind of trained it on a boat. But he's uh, literally he gets the tiger. He's literally just a he kid. gets the tiger. Okay, Obi Wan. He- Obi Wan killed a Nexu. I'm with you, but Obi Wan's dealing with 1776 right now. Um, Who's killing the tiger? Not a lot of people. I think I want Pie to make it pretty far here. No, Pie's dead. Annie, like the redhead. <laughs> The redhead. All right, she's she's dead. dead second to Brock Purdy. Nick Foles. The comedian? No. No. Who's Nick Foles? A Super Bowl MVP 2017, backup for Carson Wentz. That's why I don't know him. He's he dead. beat Tom Brady He's in dead. a Super Bowl. Karate Only Kid. Eli Manning's done Karate that. Karate Kid's dead. Yes, Karate Kid is dead. Will but Karate Smith. Kid's making it farther than Annie. Will Smith is dead. Kurt Warner's dead. Will All Smith right. is dead. Kurt Warner is dead. So now, Do you know who Kurt Warner is? Nope. So now we have... What if I tell you Kurt Warner is like... Like a One Piece character. He's not. Super power. No, he's a football player. Ta-da! Okay. Um. <laughs> he's got a movie about him, though. Zachary Levi plays him. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now... We still have Rocky and Logan Paul. I left them on there because they are boxers and fighters, at least somewhat. Then you should also leave the Karate Kid, No. No. Because he's a child? Yes. Okay. So Rocky and Logan Paul are now Do you out. know why I have Logan Paul on there? Yeah, why is he an underdog? He was an underdog to Floyd Mayweather. Ah, and he lost still. No. No winner of that fight. So he won. Hmm. I thought he was an underdog because he made he videotaped a dead person. No. 
That's also underdog-ish. But then he came back. He did come back. So that's an underdog story. He's got a big podcast, bigger than ours. Much bigger than ours. Yeah. And we haven't filmed any dead people. Um, (laughs) Jesus. You know, not yet. Okay. um, The emus. uh, The emus are a problem. Big problem. Are they a bigger problem than a winner hockey team? Yes, they are. Hockey team's out. No way. Hockey team's out. Before the emus? Yeah. But it's a miracle on ice team. You don't think they could pull off another miracle? No. I guess not. You no. only get one miracle pretty much a lifetime. That's why we got rid of David. Yeah, not against the emus. The emus are scary. You've mm-hmm. seen an emu? I've seen an emu. They'll give you nightmares. Lemu, emu. Dodgeball team's out. Yes, agreed. All right. So now- I thought they were in too long. All right, so we've got the Emus, we've got Neville Longbottom, we've got Obi Wan, we've got America Chavez, we've got the Ford Company, and we've got the United States Colonies. I think the Ford Company is out of this group first. It's just Matt Damon and Christian Bale making cars. They don't have any fight experience or anything, you know. Yeah. Now, when is America Chavez out? Soon. But can she hide? Like, can she go to another dimension to hide? No. Can, why not? Because. The fight has to take place in a certain area. Can she go to another dimension to get a weapon and no. come back? Well, then if she doesn't have dimensional powers, then she's dead immediately. Yeah, the emus are killing her. Okay. We have the emus, Neville Longbottom, Obi-Wan, and the United States colonies. Neville is a problem, but he's not like a huge problem. Correct. It's not like he's Hermione. How many emus are we talking? I can I can tell you. Okay, I need this number. Yeah, I do need this number. Emu war. I did not. Think it's nineteen thirty-two. Okay, so how many emus in Australia? In did I just say thirty-two? Nineteen thirty-two. I did not. Twenty thousand th- emus. I did not think I would be comparing emus to Neville Longbottom <laughs> can I, today. Can I please read this? Yes, please. I need all the information I can In get. In 1932, a massive migration of emus wrought havoc on the country's farmlands, deeply damaging the country's wheat supply and more. 20,000 emus descended on Western Australian migration, almost decimating farmlands. <laughs> Provided much needed wheat and supplies to Australia. That is so funny. <laughs> they had to wage war on the. Can English. I can I say something? Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. It's okay to make fun of that. Nobody died. Oh, I'm not making fun of it. Yeah. I'm taking it absolutely seriously because I think I'm giving it to the emu. Wait, they did say it took six bullets per emu. That's why they had to surrender. It was costing too they much money. They surrendered to the emus. They're yeah. like, the emus won the war. Like, because I'm thinking, can Obi Wan take out twenty thousand emus? Obi Wan is a Danakin. Vader could take out twenty thousand. Like, like, like emus. I'm not saying. Like, again, let's. Let, we have seen Obi Wan fight an animal. He fought an Ackley or one of those things, and without a lightsaber. Right. As soon as he got a lightsaber, he killed it immediately. Yeah, but still, he, he struggled a little bit. Does he have a lightsaber in this? Yeah, I think he does. Okay, me too. If he doesn't, he he might be out earlier. You're giving it to the emus over everybody else? Like, compare them. Emus versus Neville? I'm giving it to 20,000. But, like, can Neville not do one spell on them? No. Okay. 20,000. And it's Neville. It's not like he's some gifted prodigy. He's really good at herbology. Could he make... No. Something that they eat or makes them fall asleep. Yeah, or something. maybe, but I don't think it's taking out twenty thousand of them. Yeah, he doesn't have the supplies. It's a lot of emus. It's a lot of emus, and like, think about it. United States colonies—they're a problem, but it took six bullets per emu. They don't have that. Yeah, they got muskets. They back were then. eating horses. They had to, when they it was had, cold. They had to resort resort to eating their horses because they had no food, and they still won that war. Real underdog story. I want to pick the United States colonies just because represent, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't... I, USA. George George Washington, as brilliant as a military tactician he was, I, I don't I don't think I can give it to them. So yeah, again, compare it. I'm taking the emus over Neville, I'm taking the emus over the colonies, and I might take the emus over Obi-Wan. It depends on how many emus are taken out, out. 
by the time it's Obi-Wan v. the Emus. Fair. Can Obi-Wan take out 5,000 Emus? I think yes. I think so, yes. Can he take out 10,000? That is a question mark. Yeah, so, so after, after the colonies are done with him and after Neville's done with him, but at the same time... But, like, what if the colonies, what if a stray bullet just hits, hits Obi-Wan? I honestly, I don't think that's possible. I don't think a bullet could kill Obi-Wan. Not that it, like, if it hit him, it couldn't kill him. I think that would happen. But I think, I don't think bullets work in the Star Wars universe because hypothetically force just drops. Yeah. So I think the finals is Emus versus Obi-Wan. And then it's, it's just a toss up based on how many emus are left. How many emus do you think will be taken out by the the 13 colonies? And how many emus do you think will be taken out by Neville? Total, I think maybe 5,000. So 15,000 emus versus Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan I'm I going think I'm giving with the emus. Would, you like that? I love it. Yeah. I, love I knew it. you would like the underdogs. I love it. But if we were on the list. You might be the only person I get out before Brock Purdy. Do you know who Brock Purdy is? Do you know what I'm doing here? I don't he, think he, he injures does. himself a lot or something. No, no, he's the quarterback for the 49ers. Oh, you just don't like him. I hate him, but he was Mr. Irrelevant. He was the last pick of the draft. I think if we were given one prop, you and me, and we're on a team, it's like the Escape Pod podcast because we're the underdogs. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we were... are underdogs. Exactly. I like it. Ah! And we have this. I think if we just sit in the middle of the arena and we start talking, everyone's going to be like, oh. We're going to commentate. Yeah. They've taken out, okay, the 13 colonies are dwindling. We really thought the hockey team would be out before this, but it they is, are crushing. There are an insane amount of emus left. This is unsettling. <laughs> There's only one Kenobi. Oh, they're going to shoot him. Nope. Bullet didn't do anything. He has beheaded quite a lot of emus. This, there's a lot of horse. stray emu heads around this arena, but it looks like they're, pe- they're pecking his eyes out now, Dave. <laughs> I guess I should call you by your real name. They're pecking their eyes out now, Al. Al is much more a commentary name. Than I can Alex. call you Al. Exactly. You want to call me Andy just for this? Andy. I like that. Andy and Al. Can we do commentary? Can somebody get us to do commentary of some sporting event would we have to then award every single emu with like a golden do they award the hunger games winner with a golden thing sure. i've never seen the hunger Games. i'm sure they give them something they give them food we're gonna have to feed a lot of emus but like the emus would come up to be come up to us and be like one of our kindred one of our kin is on and they would just like run right past us. So we're we're immune to the emus and the emus are taking out Obi-Wan. I think we're good. I've got a question for you. The Liberty Mutual emu. Yeah. The Limu emu. Is he like their president and leader or is he like a celebrity? Is he their George Clooney? I say, is it too much to ask for both? Ronald Reagan. No. That quote? No, Ronald Reagan was like a famous actor and then he became president. Oh, I thought you were like saying that quote was Ronald Reagan. No. But anyways, yeah, in the under underdog bracket, I think I'm giving it to us because our likability will save us from everyone else and your shared DNA with an emu will save us from them. You don't think my hatred of people that I don't know will make the emus want to kill me? No. Okay. 